So at this point, we all know that I'm a big iPad Pro and iPadOS advocate, but at the same time, I have an M4 Mac Mini, and from the first day that it released, I installed macOS 26 Developer Beta 1 to see exactly what was new and if it was finally the update that we've been wanting. Now, it's packed with a ton of great features, but there's also a couple of things that I think need a little bit of improvement. So in this video, we're going to break down the wins, the unexpected letdowns, or the things that still need a little bit of work, and see if it's finally the macOS update that we've all been wanting over the last few years. Let's get into it. And now before we get into this, a big thank you to VA for sponsoring this video. And you've seen me go in depth with the Rec.ai recording earbuds in a video that we did a couple months ago. And I do have to say, I absolutely love them. But they did add some updates where they now support up to 16 different languages for seamless cross-language communication. Plus, the real-time transcription accuracy is absolutely incredible. It captures every word so nothing gets lost, whether I'm in meetings, interviews, or just taking quick notes, and I use them a ton for this channel, so stick around later for the video to get some more info on the RecDots AI. And now, let's get into macOS 26. So by this point, you've probably heard all the kind of headlining features of what's new with macOS 26 Tahoe, but I did want to kind of recap them a little bit for those people that weren't fully aware. So of course, this is a big visual overhaul from previous years with their brand new liquid glass design. So you do have the, the transparent menus, the transparent dock, the transparent widgets. It was a little bit jarring at first, especially with the menu taskbar at the top being completely translucent, so it doesn't even feel like it's there. But you do get used to it after an hour or two of getting into macOS 26. You also have those rounded corners across all the UI, so all your windows are now way more rounded off, especially the first party applications like Safari. So it's something that you do need to get used to because you're so used to kind of more of a right angle look at all the edges from a UI perspective. But overall, I do like the more playful nature of it, even though it's still very productivity focused. Spotlight got the biggest overhaul out of pretty much anything on here because in my opinion, it gets a lot more useful, a lot more interactive, and way more customizable, but we'll deep dive into that as we go along with the video. You also have more integrations with Apple Intelligence in terms of where it's acting, how it's kind of running in the background. And the idea of Apple Intelligence isn't to have kind of a ChatGPT chatbot, but it's there to kind of help you without you even really noticing. And I do see that happening more and more with kind of auto suggestions and auto fails and things that it knows that I want as I use macOS more and more. Control Center is now fully customizable and it looks as if it came out of iOS or iPadOS and that's way easier to use. You also have live activities which now live in the taskbar because of that Apple ecosystem kind of situation where you can actually iPhone mirror your iPhone onto your Mac computer. And I love how it all just kind of talks to each other. And then some other things to take into consideration is that we have some brand new first party applications. You have the phone app, which is now a Mac OS and iPad OS. You have the games application, which kind of replaces Game Center or at least integrates it and gives it its own application. And then lastly, the journals app did come over from iOS over to Mac OS. So obviously, let's start off with the good and what I've experienced and what I've liked over the last three weeks using Mac OS on a daily basis, right? The first thing I'm going to talk about is going to be Spotlight and more specifically their clipboard manager. Now, of course, there are more robust clipboard managers out there that can do a little bit more. But as somebody who's never used a clipboard manager and always wondered to people like why that would be so useful, it is an absolute game changer. So having Spotlight and having a clipboard manager built into Spotlight really changes the way that you really navigate the OS and kind of use hotkeys as opposed to using your mouse and pointer in order to navigate it. Everything just becomes a lot more fluid, more efficient, and the ability to do that has been absolutely amazing. And it works not only with text, but it works with images and videos and URLs and things of that nature. And it also tags it nicely, but the clipboard manager does end after a certain amount of time. I want to say it's 16 hours, but again, there's been conflicting kind of information in terms of how long the clipboard manager will hold on to a certain copy. But at the end of the day, it's still a positive impact on my workflow in the clipboard manager through Spotlight. And again, it just becomes much more customizable and it's almost turned into a terminal window with a lot better UI and something that's a lot more friendly to kind of engage with. So when you open up Spotlight, you do get four options right away, which you can use one through four on your keyboard in order to access each of them. And it just gives you the quick keys to make navigation that much faster. So you have the ability to start timers, launch workflows, control applications like Final Cut audio meters right from Spotlight. You also have quick keys to auto-tune tasks. So you can type something into the Spotlight like SM to send a message or TIM to set a timer in order to just kind of get that started right away. And you can customize them as you see fit. So it just feels way more kind of thought out as opposed to just a quick search bar because I use Spotlight across all my devices, especially on my iOS and iPadOS device. I like to keep my home screens and docs clean. So if I need to look for another application or a settings menu, I just use Spotlight. And now that obviously is on macOS, but way more powerful, which I love to see. 
And then you have Control Center, which like I said, it does basically look like the Control Center that we got on iPadOS and iOS with this beautiful glass look design, the liquid glasses there. Everything just feels a lot more kind of iPadOS-like, which again, kind of goes back to my sentiment that I think all these operating systems are converging into one, but that's a topic for a whole other video. But I do like how customizable it is. Now you can easily kind of remap everything add new widgets, add new control center icons, remove them, and not only that, but also add them to the menu bar and the taskbar on the top simply by clicking and dragging. So when you edit it, you do get this huge menu of different operations and different icons that you can put in there and different tools, and you just click them, you drag them in, you drag them out, very easy to customize, and it's pretty much endless in terms of how many pages you can add into your control center. And I do really like the liquid glass design, and it does look better in my opinion on Mac OS than it does on any of the other operating systems. And then again, going back to just the ecosystem of Apple, last year they introduced iPhone mirroring, which allowed you to, again, mirror your iPhone on your Mac and give you kind of this virtual view into your iPhone. So you're still using all the UI from your iPhone and all the notifications and all that good stuff from your iPhone, but it's on your Mac. And that allowed for iPhone notifications to pop in to your Mac computer, which has been great. And I love that. But now you do get a dedicated iPhone mirroring application, which is nice to see. And then secondly, live activities without you doing anything begin to show up on your Mac. I cannot tell you how cool this is when I first noticed it. For instance, I have a live activity for my ultra human ring that gives me kind of timing windows on when to do things, when to have caffeine, when to eat, because I like to intermittent fast. Now that timer is automatically on my toolbar and on my taskbar at the top of my Mac because it is connected via the ecosystem to my iPhone. And again, that is a superpower of Apple, being able to have all these different pieces of hardware talk to each other seamlessly just because you're signed into the same Apple ID and on the same Wi-Fi. Everything happens in real time. There's no issues whatsoever. If I do have another live activity, like maybe I ordered a Starbucks or a DoorDash or an Uber Eats, or maybe I order an Uber, all those live activities now show up on the toolbar. So you have visual access to it very easily without having to actually use your iPhone. And then of course, when you tap on these live activities or those notifications, it'll pop up the iPhone mirroring application, and then you can navigate your iPhone on your Mac without actually having to pull open your iPhone. And then I did mention that we got three new applications and two of them really surprised how much I actually liked them. The first one being the phone application. When I first heard that we were getting a phone app on the Mac, I thought that was gonna be extremely pointless because I don't even use Wi-Fi calling really and I can't see myself kind of starting a phone call from my Mac. But lo and behold, it's actually a great application and it syncs across your iOS device. So you can listen to your voicemails, see when stuff is coming in, you can do all the call forwarding stuff. You have your call posters, your spam filters, your live translation, your call recording, call management. All that is built into the phone application on your Mac now, which is really cool to see. So again, just more integration across your entire ecosystem. And then secondly, the game application. Again, I thought it was just going to be a simple kind of leaderboard checker or comparison kind of thing. Maybe a list of all the games that you have and, you know, reach certain milestones again, like points in terms of using a game application. But again, it adds a little bit more usability and utility, especially when it comes to the game overlay. So you can access your controller settings, your sound options and leaderboards mid game instead of having to do it outside of the game or even just customizing it in some other settings menu inside of the game. So you can do kind of like a native customization of your game center control. But then you have the shortcuts. Again, I'm not a huge shortcuts person. I have a couple of different ones, but they're very base and entry level. If you really want a deep dive, shortcuts got a lot more robust this year when it comes to automation and when it comes to using certain language models inside of shortcuts. So you have time-based shortcuts, device connection triggers, and AI tasks that are a lot more powerful than they were before. So for example, you can now automate things when it comes to external SSDs. So you can automate an external drive backup and then trigger some sort of workflow that launches an application like a Final Cut Pro. So all you do is maybe type into your shortcut or tap one button and then boom, all your windows open up that you need like a Final Cut Pro, like making sure your SSD is connected and things of that nature. So automations with shortcuts just got a lot better. And before we talk about our final thoughts with macOS 26, I did want to bring up VA one more time with the Rec.AI recording earbuds because they've been seriously impressive for me and how I use it in my workflow. Beyond the real-time transcription and translation, they've got smart formatting that makes it your notes cleaner and easier to review. You can also highlight key points live during your recordings so you can jump back into the important stuff later. And right now for Prime Day, you can grab them at a special discount, which I'll leave linked down below. So big shout out to VA for partnering up with 9 to 5 Mac and sponsoring this video, but the final verdict when it comes to macOS 26 and if it's the update that we've been waiting for, I do truly believe that it is because we are taking big strides into usability, customization, being as efficient as possible. And I saw somebody kind of mention that 
it's all kind of been cyclical because at first when you the computers first came out in like you know the 70s 80s 90s whenever people were using computers before we had a real ui interface people were using code and terminal and command lines in order to interact with their computers then we got the more playful ui then it became you know the point and mouse then it became a little bit more of what we're familiar to people want to be as efficient as they can so they want to use hotkeys they want to kind of navigate their os purely with keyboard and touch like that versus their mouse input, which I think is kind of funny. And I think it is true. People want to be able to go into spotlight and get everything they need to get done just by using their keyboard and spotlight combination. So let me know in the comment down below what you think. If this Mac OS 26 update is everything we've on in, do you like the visual changes? Do you like the actual tangible changes from a function standpoint? Always curious to discuss in the comments, but again, Mac OS 26, I think is a welcome upgrade to the previous years or the predecessor. And now that in conjunction with iPad OS 26 and iOS 26, the ecosystem, I think, is stronger than ever. But that'll do it for this video, everybody. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. Shout out to VAIM for partnering up with 9to5Mac again. And if you guys want to watch more videos like this one, check out one of these right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace.